Hello, everybody. So let's talk about temping if you are a dental hygienist. So whether you have worked in an office and you've decided to leave that practice and now you want to be a temp, or maybe you are a new grad and that's all you can find is temping. Um, depending on where you live, of course, temping is a great thing, but it has its advantages and disadvantages. But I liked temping because I could pick and choose my own hours. I had a really hard time when I worked for a dentist um, I couldn't choose my own hours. And sometimes I liked to have a day off. I know, call me crazy. Sometimes I didn't want to work evenings. I mean, who wants to work evenings? But being a temp means you can pick and choose your own hours. There are many different reasons why you might have decided to become a temp, but I'm going to help you navigate that. And most importantly, how to keep track of your income for tax time. So again, depending on where you live, the rules are a bit different please talk to your accountant and they can tell you more specifically, but this is just a general rule of thumb and what I did, okay? So I'm from Ontario and when, when I was temping, my case was a little bit different because I did have my own business as well. I've been a tutor for almost 18 years. I was teeth whitening on the side, all kinds of things. But whether you have other businesses or not, you need to keep track of your expenses. Um, sorry, not your expenses, your income. And being a temp, though, you can write off certain expenses because you're considered a self-employed individual. If you're not on somebody's payroll, if you're not working for the same office all the time, you're doing things more sporadic. If you're working for different offices, you are considered working for yourself, but you need to set aside enough money to pay for taxes. Otherwise, at the end of the year, when you owe those taxes back, you're going to be shot. What I suggest is keeping aside at least 30% of your paycheck. I know that seems like a lot, you guys, but if you were working for one office and they were taking money aside for taxes, that's what they would typically be putting aside. Probably a little bit less. So 30% is actually very generous. When I was doing it, I set aside 30% and that, and that helped me. That helped me a lot. I had plenty of money left over and I felt great. What you don't want to do is owe taxes and be like, oh, I'm $10,000 short. I'm just picking a number here. And then you have to, you know, you have to really worry. You have to scramble for that amount. Setting aside 30%, if you can afford it, of course, will really help you. Okay. And I say if you can afford it. So different months are going to be different. Let's say you have more expenses this month you need the extra money to pay off your credit card, then I suggest paying off the credit card because you're going to end up owing more interest not paying your credit card. Does that make sense? I don't want this video to get into like a money help video, but you do kind of have to be smart with it and please talk to your accountant. But at the very least, you guys, I want you guys to set aside 30%. That way you don't have to, have to worry about it. In brackets, I want to say if you can afford it. If you owe a thousand dollars on your credit card and you're thinking, okay, I can't put aside thirty thousand dollars for taxes, I really need to pay this credit card, pay that first. That's what I was talking about. But keep track of your income, all of that in an Excel spreadsheet that will help you because come tax time, you're going to need to account for that income, right? And if you ever get audited, they're going to want to see which office paid you, when they paid you, for how many hours. These offices are going to be giving you an invoice. They're going to be giving you the amount you made per hour based on the hours you worked. Keep all of that. You must keep all of that, you guys, okay? Please do not forget to do that. If your accountant is working with you, or I should say, if you're working with an accountant, you can claim certain expenses as well. How did you get to that office or those offices where you were temping? A car, right? You can, you can claim a portion of your car if you needed winter tires, if you needed all season tires, if you had to pay for oil, for oil changes, pay for your gas, those can all be written off a certain way. Your accountant does that for you. I tried to do that myself. Very confusing. Hiring an accountant is the best decision ever. Okay. Hire one. Um, your cell phone. How did you book those offices or how did they get in contact with you? Probably your cell phone, right? Either by email, um, phone calls, whatever. You can write off a portion of that. Well, your internet. How did you find 
those temp agencies or how did you find those offices? Do you look at something on Facebook? Well, that's the internet. So these things you can keep track of. What about your uniform? Certain expenses. Do you have to buy your own PPE? I hope not. But if you do, keep track of all of those expenses and the receipts. That will be something you can claim later. So does this make sense, you guys? This is a very general look at things, but this can help those just getting started kind of what to do. Um, and if you are with a temp agency who takes a certain percentage of your fee, um, or sorry, of your paycheck, that is considered an expense for you. So I'm just picking a number. If they take 10% off from every paycheck, that will be an expense. You will get that back or at least get a tax credit at the end of the year. So make sure to keep track of any fees they're taking. That is an expense for you, but you have to write that down in an Excel spreadsheet. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I am very happy to help and I will talk to you guys in the next one.